Welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for April. Hi everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I hope you have been enjoying the Chic Assignment for April so far. The Chic Assignment is brought to us by The Chic Society. That is my private membership group here on YouTube. You are going to see some names scrolling in the ticker down below. These are one of the upper tier members. Membership is only $1.99 a month and I do one podcast every Friday and we go live or we do a Zoom call once a month. I talk about really interesting things in the vodcasts and recently I previewed my spring summer 10 item capsule wardrobe there uh, a few weeks before it's going to show on YouTube. Like I said, membership is only $1.99 a month. There are also upper tiers and those upper tiers get recognition in these chic assignment check-in videos. So you are seeing one of the upper tiers now. These are the chic connoisseurs. And I do hope that you will stay until the end of the video where I'm going to share the elegant connoisseurs with you. Many of them have very interesting businesses or they're just uh, high patrons of the channel and I appreciate every single one. Okay, so for the Chic Assignment check-in, we are going to dive into eight quick and interesting facts about Puccini. We're also going to learn more about Berthe Morisot. She had a fascinating career as one of the female impressionists. We will also talk about the vegetarian meals and spring cleaning, plus my interview with Richard Thompson Ford. So I hope that you will pour yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy the Chic Assignment check-in. Okay, let's start with Puccini. So I assigned Omio Babino Caro and I assigned both the operatic performance as well as the violin performance. My favorite was that incredible violin performance. And um, she did, Carolyn did such a beautiful job with that. It's so moving and I listened to it so many times this month. So I really hope that you enjoyed that. We're going to learn eight things about Puccini that you might not have known. These are very, quick and fast facts about Puccini. He had a rather interesting life. So this is coming from Opera Memphis. I will leave the article down below and let's dive right in. Number one, Puccini's full name was Giacomo Antonio Domenico Michel Secundo Maria Puccini. He was named after four recent ancestors. Interesting fact number two, Puccini struggled in school at Seminario di San Michele and Seminario di San Martino. He was expelled several times and only readmitted with his mother's insistence. Number three, Puccini was worth roughly $200 million when he died. He is considered one of the most commercially successful composers of all time. Number four, Puccini almost missed his first Metropolitan Opera opening in 1907 for his opera Manon Lescaut. The steamership he was traveling on was late getting to the port the night of the premiere. Imagine the anxiety he felt with that. Number five, Puccini was a playboy. He had a long-standing affair with a married woman, Elvira, until her husband died and Puccini was able to marry her. His infidelity continued throughout their marriage as well. Number six, Puccini included cars along with pay, accommodations, and expenses in his contracts with the Met. He was an avid fan of automobiles and technology. Number seven, Puccini was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1923. It was deemed inoperable and experimental radiation treatments caused a fatal heart attack in 1924. And number eight, Puccini never finished Turando. When he passed away in 1924, the piece was incomplete. In 1926, it was picked back up and finished by Franco Alfano, who used Puccini's sketches as guiding framework for how it should be completed. Now, of course, Puccini is most widely known for Tosca, Madame Butterfly, and uh, Gianni Schicchi was the uh, piece that Omio Babino Caro came from. So, uh, like with many of our other artists, he led a very complicated, complex life. A lot of artists struggle with their personal lives and uh, poor choices that they make there. Uh, it looks like he overcame dropping out of school several times to, uh, lucky he was talented, right? Um, to become very successful. And it is a shame that he did have uh, you know, some of those challenges in his personal life. But there is no denying that Puccini was a genius and uh, his music is absolutely 
splendid. So I hope that you enjoyed those eight interesting facts about Puccini and that you know something more about him than when before you started the video. All right, cheek assignment number two was to enjoy the artwork of Berthe Morisot. Berthe Morisot was a French Impressionist painter. And the way you say her name in French is Berthe, but I'm going to say Berthe because I'm American and it just comes easier to me. So let's begin with her biography. I'm going to be showing you some of her amazing paintings while I'm speaking, and I would love for you to tell me which one is your favorite down below. Berthe Morisot was born in France in 1841. Her family was well off and her father worked as a senior administrator for the local government. Her mother was related to Rococo painter Jean-Honoré Fragonard. Morisot had two older sisters, Yves and Edma, and a younger brother, Tiburce. In 1852, the family moved to Paris where Morisot would live for the rest of her life. As the daughters of a bourgeois family, it was expected that Berthe and her sisters would receive an artistic education. The painter Joseph Guichard, one of their private tutors, took them to the Louvre where he taught them to learn by copying the paintings on the walls. Guichard notably warned the girl's parents that continuing their artistic education could be problematic. Given your daughter's natural gifts, it will not be petty drawing room talents that my instruction will achieve. They will become painters. Are you fully aware of what that means? It will be revolutionary, I would almost say catastrophic, in your haute bourgeoisie milieu. Isn't that interesting? He was pretty arrogant for a teacher, right? <laughs> He's saying, I'm going to basically create prodigies for you. However, Edma and Berth continued to be taught even after this warning. After a while, however, Edma married a naval officer and moved away to have children, meaning she gave up her serious artistic pursuits. But she did continue to encourage Berth, with whom she was very close to continue working. So this is kind of like what we were talking about with the Have You Lost Yourself video that I did last week. Um, Edma did give up her, her artistic talent when she got married. Birth, uh, she does get married later on in life, but she chose to keep it. Very interesting. I say you keep it, right? Morisot responded by registering as a copyist at the Louvre. When she was there, she got to know other artists, including the landscape painter Jean-Patiste Camille Carreau. He encouraged her to start working en plein air, which means outside, when she began to produce her first serious paintings. She studied painting extensively during this period and was also taught sculpture, although none of her sculptural works survived. In 1864, when Morisot was only 23, the official Parisian salon accepted two of her landscape paintings. As a young woman, this was an almost unheard of achievement. One critic responded by saying, you see ladies, one may be an artist and take part in public exhibitions of painting and remain, as before, a very respectable and charming person. She continued to show at the salon for several years where her work was generally well received. All right, let's talk about the mature period. In 1868, Morisot met the effective leader of avant-garde painting in Paris, Edward Manet. Manet famously wrote in a letter to Henri Fantin Latour, the two sisters Morisot are delightful. What a shame they aren't men. <laughs> Manet and Morisot immediately became quite close and began to provide feedback on each other's work. Manet evidently respected Morisot's opinion and work as an artist. Notably, Morisot prompted Manet to take up en plein air painting, which was a significant move in his artistic practice. Manet painted Morisot 12 times, making her his most frequent subject. He completed a particularly famous portrait of Morisot in 1872, where he depicted her wearing a black dress with a confident, intelligent gaze. It has been suggested that the pair were romantically involved, but couldn't pursue a relationship as Manet was already married by the time they met. It stands to remember that Manet was quite the playboy of his time, regularly attending brothels and reportedly keeping company with many women outside of his marriage. Whether the two had a passionate affair, or Morisot was the exception to Manet's supposed habits, is unknown. Through the letters left by Morisot, we do know she cared deeply for the charismatic Manet. In 1872, Morisot sold 22 paintings to the private dealer Durand Ruel, marking the start of her career as an established artist. Through her connection with Manet, Morisot was drawn into a circle of painters who were later known as the Impressionists. Manet himself refused to leave his more traditional art career and encouraged Morisot not to join the avant-garde group. However, Morisot didn't take his advice and her work was included in the first ever exhibition of Impressionist painting in 1874, pointing to her importance within the growing movement. 
Morisot's skill at gauging public taste is suggested by the fact that her work remained popular throughout her lifetime, and she often outsold many of her contemporaries, including Edgar Degas, who we've also studied in uh, The Chic Assignment. Edgar Degas was a frequent visitor at her family home and is thought to compete with Manet for her attention. Claude Monet and Alfred Sicily. Can you imagine being friends with Degas, Manet, Monet, and Sicily? I mean, this is just, it's pretty incredible. In 1874, and at the relatively late age of 33, Morisot married Manet's younger brother, Eugène. Some have suggested that theirs was a marriage of convenience a second best option when Morisot couldn't marry the older, already married artist. Eugène was also an artist, but he agreed to give up his own career in order to help Morisot in hers. Upon their marriage, Edgar Degas gifted the couple a portrait of Eugène Manet, never again painted Morisot after their marriage. So that's kind of strange, she married her, his brother. Okay, late period. Unlike her sister, Morisot continued to paint while also carving out a life as a wife and mother. In 1878, she and Eugène welcomed their first and only child, Julie. Morisot frequently painted her daughter, and as a child, Julie also posed for several other painters, such as Manet and Renoir. Remember, she was in um, the Renoir painting that we studied in the other Chic assignment. Throughout her career, Morisot had close friendships with many members of the Impressionist circle, including Degas, Monet, Renoir, and the poet Mallarme. She continued to be actively involved in the Impressionist group, exhibiting with them every year except 1878. She even organized the final Impressionist exhibition in 1886 entirely single-handedly. Unusually, Morisot always exhibited under her maiden name instead of using a pseudonym or her married name. Eugène Manet suffered from a period of poor health beginning in 1891 and finally died in Paris the following year. Three years later, their daughter Julie contracted pneumonia. Morisot nursed her back to health but sadly picked up the illness herself and eventually died on March 2, 1895. After her death, the poet Paul Valéry wrote that Berthe Morisot's uniqueness was to live her painting and to paint her life. She took up put down, return to her brush, like a thought that comes to us, is clean, forgotten, then occurs to us once again. Throughout her career, Berthe Morisot had to fight against preconceptions of women and their role. She was highly unusual in her decision to be an artist, as well as a wife and mother, but many people inevitably saw her primarily in her traditionally female roles. Therefore, until recently, it has been assumed that Manet was the master and Morisot the student in their relationship, but it is certainly arguable that they influenced each other in different ways. I find Berthe Morisot incredibly inspiring because she was able to be a wife and a mother and continue with her uh, painting career. She didn't let that go and I'm so grateful for that because look at what she left all of us with her legacy. And I do remember seeing Manet's portrait of her at the Musée d'Orsay when I was in Paris and I was so fascinated by that portrait and I remember in my art history class, this was one of my favorite storylines. Uh, learning about her was very inspiring for me. Okay, chic assignment number three was to try a vegetarian dish this month. I hope that you enjoyed my video where I shared six vegetarian dinner ideas for you. If you haven't seen it, I will leave it in the iCard up above as well as down below in the show notes but there were some really good ideas in that video. And I do think that it's a good idea to have some meatless meals. One of the things I noticed when I was prepping for that video, because I did all of those recipes in one week, was that my grocery bill was really low. It was under $100. And um, I just couldn't believe that all of those meals could be made for such an inexpensive price. So budget is also another thing to consider when you try vegetarian cooking. So I hope you enjoyed that assignment. Let us know what you made this month down below. And chic assignment number four was to immerse yourself into spring cleaning. And I did a spring clean with me that I will also leave down below. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Richard Thompson Ford on the book Dress Codes. I had such a great time discussing this book with Professor Ford and the history of dress codes and how they have impacted fashion. So I would love to know what you have read this month that has really inspired you. Thank you so much for joining us for The Chic Assignment. I am now going to share The Elegant Connoisseurs with you. They are the top tier in the YouTube memberships here in The Chic Society, so here we go. Amanda Dykes, author of award-winning fiction, written to light the dark and lift your heart. 
Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Brandy Still, silhouette artist, keeping alive the art of silhouette portraiture that dates back from 1700s France. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Dressed for My Day with Kay Harms encourages women 40-plus to care for and dress their bodies in a way that helps us influence our world positively and with grace. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, Simple and Effective Strategies for Permanently Living at Your Natural Weight, to get started. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms. Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Moms Smart Kid Chore System. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel, and Etsy shop, Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet. Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Katie Rose, artist. Her collection, Good Tidings, is inspired by landscapes around our globe in this time of strengthening through struggle. Her original paintings can be found at katierosecollection.com. Lindy Sellers, Diary of Domesticity YouTube channel. Traditional homemaking for the modern woman. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic intimate care for women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance Dress Boutique. Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. S.E. Sprocker, author of Chewy Marmot. When a mysterious cloud rolls over Marmton, a young marmot unwittingly becomes the keeper of fennel, the oddball otter who has the only key to saving their world. Available now on Amazon and free with Kindle Unlimited. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. Michelle Rohr from the Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Allen Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at allenscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation generation to cherish. Something to cherish, beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following. Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Guy Blaze, Jen Carlson, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, Maria Condor, Melissa M., and Prudently at Home. Thank you so much to the Chic Society for supporting my channel and bringing us the Chic Assignment check-in. I hope you enjoyed the assignment this month. Don't forget to keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you on Monday. Goodbye.